Today, we have some guests, one in which his birthday is today. Born in Brooklyn, New York, uh, to a Guyanese parents, to Guyanese parents, moved to Stone Mountain, uh, Latonia around age eight, grew up in DeKalb County, played football on a scholarship at Furman University. Two degrees, political science and health and exercise science, and you went to FAMU Law. Y'all make some noise with FAMU. So real quick, can we get a quick happy birthday to Attorney Mars on the count of three? One, two, three. Happy birthday! Okay, we're not singing. We ain't singing. We ain't got time for that. We ain't, ain't nobody got time Thank for that. Thank y'all very much. And then we have Judge Fonnie Willis. Y'all make some noise for Judge Fonnie Willis. <laughs> Howard alum, cool out. Now, ladies, y'all gonna want to pay attention to this because she is the epitome of pretty girls rock. She is the epitome of what a, a, a woman can do in this country that honestly, uh, I'm gonna be just keeping it all the way 100. A lot of the power jobs go to men, but she's standing proof of what women could do in this country. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Pretty girls, let me make some noise. Yes, ma'am. Howard alum, cum laude, uh, 92, Emory Law, 96 grad. First four years were within the private sector representing citizens of South Fulton, uh, citizens of Fulton County. In 2000, served one year as an assistant solicitor for the city of Atlanta. 2001, began serving in Fulton County DA's office as an assistant district attorney. 2004 through 2012, major case and cold case division. 2012, became deputy district attorney of the complex trial division. Teaches attorneys at the Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia. She actually taught this brother here, right? That's right. Okay. Uh, 2015, founded for the love of Carla, a nonprofit that promotes awareness of sickle cell anemia. Awards that she's been given range from 2018 for the most powerful and influential woman of the year, July 23rd, 2019 of this year, right? Willis was appointed by Mayor William B. Edwards and elected by the city council as chief municipal court judge, city of South Fulton. Has a law firm in Atlanta, Georgia, where she specializes in civil forfeiture, business litigation, and family law. So what you have here is not only a judge, but she has her own attorney firm. Y'all make some noise for that. Boss boss. Yeah, so she's a boss boss. She's not just a boss, she's a boss boss. You dig what I'm saying? So I've got some uh, questions that I want to uh, put out there because I see a lot of young people I mean, young people shoot texts. In the course of a day, you can send about, what, 50, 60 texts, right? Ladies, how many of you have ever gotten a text uh, from a young man asking you to send them a picture? Raise your hands. Every okay. hand should be up. Come on now. I, I said, ladies. Okay, do I need to be more specific? Because this senior high, right? This is not junior high, right? Is this senior high? Can I keep it 100 with you? Ladies. Here we go, Judge. How many of you have ever been asked to send nudes? One, two, three, four. I got adults raise the um. <laughs> okay, so that's the majority of you, and I do see the young ladies whose hands are raised like this. Right? My mama looking. <laughs> uh, Judge Fani, what constitutes a sexual predator? huge question what constitutes a sexual predator. Um, maybe somebody that's asking you to send their picture is a sexual predator. There are certainly consequences for that conduct, both from the young lady that sends the picture as well as the person that's asking to send the picture. Um, I told them I did look up a little law because I wanted to make sure that I got things exactly correct for you, but it is a felony. It is in fact child molestation to ask someone under the age of 16 or 16 and under to send a picture of them, whether that picture is bestiality. Anybody knows what bestiality is? What is bestiality? Right, it's, so it's sexual conduct with not just a dog, but any animal, that sounds outrageous. But it's also sexual conduct between adults in any way, or it is just what the pastor said, a nude picture period. Um, so that, that is actually the crime of child molestation. Anyone know what the minimum is for the first time doing that? In a minimum time you can do in jail, anybody got a guess? 
Five years is the minimum and the maximum is 20 just for you sending a nude picture and you're 15 years old to an adult, which could be 18 or 19 years old. Judge, Judge Finder, let me ask you a question. So to a young man who didn't ask for the picture, who didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask for the picture, but the girl just- She just volunteered. She just volunteered the picture and, you know, I didn't see what it was, but curiosity made me open it. What, what, is, what, is, what would that constitute as? Well, you probably are, st you may still be guilty of that crime. You're certainly guilty of that crime if you store it. Um, what do you mean? If you store it. So if you put that in a computer and somebody gets access to it, you're guilty, or if, even if you store it in your phone. Or, I mean, she looks really hot, so I am going to show my boys, right? So when I show my boys the cute girl that sent the nude picture, I've now committed a crime. You got a couple you, crimes. You've now. committed a couple of crimes by taking the picture you didn't even ask to get sent and showing it off. And so, so you could also be guilty of child molestation. Let's say you are 17 and you showed it to your 15 year old, you know, he's in 10th grade, you in 11th grade, y'all shared that picture. You're also guilty of a crime. If you have a question, just come up to the mic. Also, for those of you that are in uh, Villa Rica, uh, Macon, and you guys are streaming from any of our fellowship locations, just text inside the group me, and we'll make sure we get your question answered, okay? Go ahead. What if the person that sends like the picture, if, like, if, like if they ask, if y'all both like, ask, is that what the same age? Like, so speak up a little bit. You, if sorry. it's two 15 year olds, then like, is that person still charged like child molestation because they're under 18 or? It would be because they were both under 15, so there are some felonies, and we'll talk about those, even though it's a little off subject, that it automatically becomes a felony, and at 15 years old, you'd go to adult court, but if it, let's say, two 15-year-olds committed, did that to each other, they still would be guilty of what's called a delinquent act, and this is the juvenile uh, prosecutor of the year, so I'll let him talk a little bit about that, so your case would go to juvenile court, um, and you would still be prosecuted. Um, the benefit is it wouldn't stay on your record for the rest of your life because another consequence of that child molestation is you also have to register as a sex offender and that would be till you're 80, till you're 90, till you die. Um, but if you were both 15 years old, you would at least not have the consequence of having to register as a sexual offender. So, wow, that's, that's pretty deep because I have this app as a parent, I have an app that shows me when sex offenders live in my neighborhood. Naturally, you want to be mindful of that because, you know, my boys asked me if they could go to the park to the play ball. My daughter, you know, may want to go to the park and chill with her friends and different things like that. And I wouldn't want I would want to know what's around me. So sexual predators have to register in whatever county they're in. How, how does you're telling me a teenager can be a sex offender? Absolutely. If you're 17 years old and you're the girl, you're 17 years old and you're 17 year old boyfriend asked you to send a naked picture of him. Um, you sending that naked picture is pornography. And dissemination so of child pornography. It's the dissemination of child pornography and therefore you would have to register as a sex offender. And that wow. is till the day you die. Wow. How many of y'all heard of Richard Mill? Y'all got a Richard Mill watch? Come on, all the fellas I know. So y'all know that brand, right? Y'all understand brands, right? So imagine walking around for the rest of your life being branded as a sexual predator because you decided to send a picture. You decided to open a picture. You decided to put it on your phone. You decided to send it to your boys. Mm -hmm. It's that quick. Y'all got platforms right here. These phones are very, very powerful. Very powerful. And y'all got developing brains. I mean, you see what it's doing to the adults. So we know what it's doing to y'all. I know it's tough, but that's why we're here talking to you. We want y'all to understand the severity of your actions and why you have to think before you act. Wow. And what I would say is um, if someone sent me a sec sexual picture, just because phones are evidence forever. So you delete that picture immediately, you don't share it with anyone, but that picture still gets out there because guess what? The other person's phone gets confiscated for some reason unrelated, Ooh. and they see that you've sent a picture. I would probably immediately text them 
hey, don't send me this again. I don't want to receive it because I would want documented evidence of all time. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it, and I'm not sharing it because um, that will automatically show. You know, you can't help that someone sent it to you, but you can certainly help what you did from that point. Um, and it's just phones for prosecutors. I was a prosecutor for 16 years. It's like candy. It's the best evidence we ever get. Um, and so it stays Even there Even after forever. they delete it. After they delete it, it's easy Because you can do like get. a forensic. You can do a forensic search. The GBI can pull it off easily, which is why I would want that. Since they create evidence against me, let me create some evidence for me. Don't send me this anymore. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Y'all make some noise for that. Because she just gave y'all, young ladies, when they sending you those uh, pics, <laughs> respond back, please don't send me this again. I do not want it, nor did I ask you for it. I do not want to see this. Because here's what happens. You delete it, right? And, and, and I got another question, too, because one of the things you said that if the girl sends it to the guy, the guy's in trouble. But what happens to the girl? Oh, the girl's in trouble because she is the one that disseminated pornography. Okay. She's absolutely guilty of uh, child molestation for sending that or for sending pornography. There are so many different statutes. That one act, you have violated about three or four Georgia statutes. And so wow. you open yourself up to so much liability. So absolutely, the person that sent it is guilty of doing Doing something with it but judge we're boyfriend and girlfriend and we love each other and you know um, I, of course you know I trust her she trusts me but we've been sending things yeah they've been inappropriate you may think it's inappropriate but I love her and she loves me but you know my grades have been slacking and because my grades have been slacking my mom took my phone and if your mom takes the phone to the police and my mom took my phone and when she 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 said what's your passcode and she went on my phone and she saw all of our in love stuff and we think it's in love but she of course she's gonna look at it as inappropriate because she sucks she's just a parent she old she old she doesn't get it and it's like we wasn't even trying to do that our intentions wasn't that we really love each other this is my boyfriend so this is okay right but the mother of the female is embarrassed because this is my baby girl that sent you this even though y'all go together and now I have to call his parents to let him know, even though I'm embarrassed that my daughter did this, but out of that embarrassment and out of that shame, I'm not going to be the one to just look like, like my daughter's just a harlot. I want your son to suffer too. What happens in situ? Have you ever seen situations like that? As you guys have, you know, out of pride and out of shame, the daughter was just as guilty as the son or the son was just as guilty as the daughter, but the parents get in pride because they're embarrassed of what happened and they want to take it to the, to the limit. And that Talk pride that. and that embarrassment right there is that dovetail, is that unforeseen consequence that y'all don't understand. Because sometimes it can get to a teacher. Because teachers are parents. Yeah. And they're mandatory reporters. There you go. That's my whole point right there. Because the parents could want to handle it with to say, you know what, these are kids. They're young. They didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. But it gets out there yeah. to a teacher, to a police officer who lives in the neighborhood. And now they have to act. Can you explain what a mandatory report? Because everyone in team ministry is a man. Uh, anybody, uh, any ambassador in team ministry, raise your hand. All ambassadors, raise your hand. All leaders in team ministry, all adult leaders, raise your hand. Everybody who raise their hand is a mandatory reporter. Okay. Can you explain what that means? Okay, so social workers, um, people like your pastor, your teachers, if they see that you all have committed this act and they do not report it to the police, they have now violated the law as well and open themselves up to criminal liability. And so what is more likely to happen is the parents are likely to have this private conversation and it's probably not going to go past there, right? How many parents are actually going to call the police on their kids? Now, you got a few. My daddy probably would have. Yeah. But um, a few, most parents are probably not going to call the police. What's more likely to happen is your phone is lost. Because how many people in here have misplaced their phone? I, I just did it this morning. You put your phone down, somebody else picks up your phone, um, and they get in your phone for that reason. Mm -hmm. If one of these pastors, not even trying to be in your business because they got other things on their mind, get in your phone because they're trying to figure out which kid do we get this phone back to, um, and they see something like that, they are mandated to report that to the police because people are so afraid of these days of child molestation and things of that nature happening. And that's what's going to get you in liability. Or your boyfriend is with his friends and they all smoking weed and people don't seem to understand that's a crime. 
So when they get arrested for doing something that minor, the police go through the phone at that point. They get a search warrant because they think that these are major drug dealers. But when they go in that phone, they're not just going to see, you know, the weed transactions. They're also going to see the pictures of the boyfriend and the girlfriend going back and forth. And so that opens it up to now a sex crimes investigation. And things just have a way of snowballing. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I want to shift gears a little bit uh, because we, we, you guys understand the sexual side of it. Uh, as far as, you know, the pictures. Raise your hand if you have any questions on that before we move on. I just wanted to make sure that we educated you guys because it's more than just sending a picture and it's more than just you erasing it. If they have it, and you know, some families have a uh, family sharing where, you know, the parents can see all of the messages that come into their kids. So what you think is private between you and that one person, it, it may not be. And you can't just go, you guys put too much trust in people your age who are still developing in a level of maturity. You can't expect mature trust from someone your own age because maturity levels, they differ. And I just want to say that uh, you mentioned when I was 14 to 18, I had the same boyfriend and we were in love. And thank God there weren't cell phones because you know what, what God said. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> The point is relationships go wrong. Yeah. Um, some of y'all are in your first love and so you don't know they go wrong. When they go wrong, people do very hateful things. Ugly, ugly. Ugly things, things to each other. Adults do them, kids do them, teenagers. And so that boy you trust so much right now, you may can't trust him next year when you decided his friend was really finer and that's who I'm going to date. And when you do that... That doesn't happen. Girls don't do that. Oh, yeah, that, that happens. <laughs> you gotta be... What are you... No. 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 We do upgrades. Upgrades? <laughs> we're, we're, we're not cell phones. We're human beings. No, we, we upgrade. And so when you decide you're going to upgrade him, because, you know, this one's car is better and he's finer, and, you know, you like him better for whatever reason. He's funnier. <laughs> he's, he's nicer to you. That picture lasts forever. And that embarrassment, he doesn't understand when he posted on social media to embarrass you, he's not only going to get himself in trouble, he's not only going to embarrass you, he's going to open you up to criminal liability because he was trying to prove a point. You proved a point that got us all jammed up and in trouble. And so even if you trust him now, it's just not better to do because that evidence lasts forever. Forever. Um, I've seen... I've got a, a video I want to show you. One of our coaches who coaches one of our teams for uh, the WCYE Lions, um, his house was shot up about three, about three, four weeks ago now. Um, let's try and figure out what that noise is, guys. Uh, but his house was shot up about three, four weeks ago. Um, his oldest stepson is a crip. And he had got into it with some bloods. Well, those of you that know South Fulton, South Fulton, South Fulton is predominantly blue. And when he got into it with this group, they came and they shot up his house. Well, he decided to get on social media because none of him or his family was injured in that attack. And he posted a picture of him holding a firearm. And he put the hashtag still standing, pull up. And when he did that, four hours later, this happened. This is true story. This is right here on Bethsaida Road. So you see the car coming in, and then the car goes into a cul-de-sac. This is right here off Bethsaida Road, right down the street on Old National by the CVS. a matter of fact, I have students that live in this neighborhood. They go down, you see the car turn around in the cul-de-sac. There's four individuals in this vehicle. They thinking about it, they talking about it, they either cocking their uh, weapons. I would assume that they had AK-47s because of the way the, uh, the gun bursts come, but as you can see, here they come. Was it worth it? Coach Jermaine and his eight-year-old son, his wife, are literally on the ground, frozen. Trying, and he's trying to protect his family from 
getting shot because a 21-year-old male, his stepson, who has a child and whose child was uh, a part of the first attack, he has a young child, decided pride was going to get the, you know, be the best thing and he's going to say, oh no, you're not going to do this. Uh, hey, I'm still standing. Y'all ain't get me. Y'all ain't get me. Nah, nanny, boo, boo. It's like they already showed you what they could do to you. They already showed you what they were capable of. And you get on social media and you post it publicly for everyone to see. It's almost as if you put them in a situation because if they don't respond, what happens? What happens if they don't respond after being disrespected like that? No one takes them serious. Right? And their whole demeanor or their ho the whole foundation of what they stand for is driven off of fear. If you're afraid of me, then you'll do what I tell you to do. So if you disrespect me and I don't do anything to you, everybody's going to think we done went what? Soft. So that man's whole family, we just thank God for the power of grace and for God's protection that no one was injured in that situation. But just at the touch of a button, now let's talk about that for a second. Because you mentioned something to me earlier as far as it's all about platforms, right? And, you know, I've been sharing with the young people how I feel like the cell phones, God has been replaced by these cell phones. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and good things for you. But kids don't want to hear that. They want to see how many likes they can get, how many views they can get. How many off the chain uh, uh, comments they can get? How many followers they can get? And now your whole identity is attached to that social media page or, or your whole life is connected to that phone and it's slowly but surely deteriorating away from God who created you. God wants a relationship with you. I told you as believers, our job is to know God and show him, to know Christ and to show Christ. But how can you develop your relationship with him if everything that's supposed to be going to him is now being wrapped up in this device called a cell phone. Your identity, your affirmations, your security, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, your emotions, everything has been wrapped up into this cell phone. I told you, and I'll say this and then I'll uh, uh, cut to attorney Mars, but I'll say this, Dr. Dollar taught me at a very young age, Anthony, don't get caught up in accolades. And I didn't understand why he said that. He said, because if you get caught up in accolades, then when those accolades turn into crit criticism, just as much as those accolades built you up, that criticism will tear your behind down. He said, so as a pastor, let it go in one ear and out the other. And I didn't understand that until I became a pastor. And then I got it. Oh man, you preached that message. That was a good message. Praise God, God is good. In one ear, out the other. Because the next week, oh man, that message was sorry. My identity isn't in you, it's in Jesus Christ. But if I put myself and make myself subject to your opinion and how you think of me, or if I give you my life and put my life in your hand, and it's based upon your opinion on whether you like it or whether you view it or whether you support it or whether you don't, now my identity is attached to you and you're already fickle. You're still trying to figure out who you are. Does that make sense? So let's talk about that platform piece because I feel like it's definitely relevant when it comes to people replacing God with this device. It's like we said earlier, it's, it goes back to attention, right? So this is a platform for attention. Right. You know, attention is something that's hardwired into your brain. As a baby, you cry because you want your parents' attention. You need them. You need uh, attention-seeking behavior in order to survive. What happens is as you grow and develop, those attention-seeking behaviors change because other people get into your head. People outside of your family influence and everything, people who don't have your best interests at heart, they get into your brain, they fill you up with all this stuff that says, come seek attention with me. Come do it on social media. Y'all are getting attention right now. Y'all feel that, but it's in a positive way. You know, it's not in a negative kind of, oh, it's going to be out there. It's no Instagram in here, right? It's no Snapchat. It's not all that other, it's no social media and all that stuff. No other platforms for attention that you're getting. See, what we are, we the generic drug, right? And social media and all that stuff, that's the souped up drugs, right? That's the, the molly, 
That's fentanyl. That's all the stuff that we ain't we ne we had no clue about. It is like a drug, ain't it? It definitely is a drug. So you is 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 literally you can literally call someone addicted to their cell phone a junkie. You know, I got a cousin who's a junkie, <laughs> and y'all want to meet him? He's here. Y'all want to meet my cousin? His name's South. His last name is Fulton. <laughs> is is a uh, South out there? Where is it? <laughs> Where yet? Hey, South, come here, man. This my cut. What's up, boy? Uh, you all right? Why are you scratching like that? You good? My neck itch a little bit, you know. What you say? My neck, my neck itch a little bit. Your neck itch a little bit. You, you, uh, you got a cell phone charge? My phone about to die. Your cell phone about to die? That's why you itching? What's that, crack? <laughs> the judge here. Okay. All right, well, get up and get, a, get you a chair. Pull up right here for me. It's my cousin. He's addicted to his cell phone. That's his addiction. He don't really do crack. He just do cell phones. And you should see him when it ain't no Wi-Fi. Woo! Ooh! Because he ain't pay his cell phone bills, so the only time his phone work is when he connected to what? Wi-Fi. Wi huh? Why are we making fun of you? See, yeah, he fiending right now because his phone about to die. He about to go in right now. But let's talk a little bit more. He can't get that attention. He can't get that fix. Ex Describe what he's going through. Listen, they study people who are entertainers, right? When you can get the rush. Imagine if you walked out and it was 40,000 people screaming your name and you had a song that everybody knew and they were singing it. Imagine how on top of the world you would feel. Now imagine doing that for five years straight. Your brain is getting fed that attention. Mm. That attention and it's a powerful drug Fame is the most powerful drug known to man. I'm from Brooklyn, so that's a Jay-Z quote, if y'all didn't know that. <laughs> but seriously, and people who come up, performers who come off the road, they have to do so many drugs to replace that feeling, that rush, that high of coming out on stage and people, everybody singing my song, everybody bopping. I can tell everybody, I can tell 40,000 people, hey, shut up. Hey, sing my song. Hey, say Ronald McDonald. And they gonna do it. That's power. He commands your attention. You know, he earned that though. Right? And what he was telling you about, Pastor Dollar telling him about once he gets these accolades, let it go in one ear and That's out. That's why. That's why. Yeah. Because you get hooked on that. And if he was feeling himself, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing for y'all right now. Yeah. He wouldn't care about showing y'all love and attention when he could be doing whatever he wants to do with his life. Wow. But he's taking his time out to show y'all the love because we don't want y'all to go out there and get that fake love. Because there's plenty of fake love on, on this right here. Mm. And y'all got access to it. And your parents don't know how to cut it off. Mm. And that's why they don't know when a junkie walk in their house who they dealing with. It's crazy because the Bible talks about how there's a way that seems right but leads to destruction. Young ladies, young men, there's going to be a lot of things in life as you grow up that's going to make you feel a certain type of way. And you're going to like the way it feels. And I'm not even talking about physically. I'm talking about, uh, girls, you ever had that feeling that a, a dude said something to you and he just gave you like butterflies in your stuff? You're like, oh my God, he's so sweet! Or fellas, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna throw y'all in there too. You know, the girl said something to stroke your ego a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, that's my boyfriend. He buff. Oh, you better not say that about my boyfriend. My boyfriend don't play that. Straight facts, straight facts. He'll get up in your grill real quick. <laughs> fellas feel like this after when a girl said that. He'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hopefully he don't try me though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But. uh that stuff feels right and it's created to there's a let's let's not even get spiritual let's get very natural and practical real quick everyone has this chemical in their brain called dopamine everyone say dopamine dopamine, dopamine is a chemical now 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 bear with me cuz y'all better than me pastor Anthony got his GED so dopamine is a chemical in your brain that controls or has a lot to do with pleasure. Am I right? With drugs, there's a tap out limit. You could, you could, you could smoke weed, but the more and more you smoke, you'd be like, all right, that's enough for right now. 
when you get on these phones, there's no tap out. There's no, this is enough. How many of you have been on a Monday, it could be a Monday night, you got school Tuesday morning, and you don't go to bed till what time? Three. What time? 12, two, who said three, three o'clock? Three, bro. 3 a.m. What are you doing? What are you doing? Let me hear from the students. Students, what are you doing? On your phone. And a lot of times, you ain't even doing nothing. Your Wi-Fi broke, you're dusty. <laughs> Your hair uneven. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But a lot of times, what you doing? You just scrolling, scrolling, trying to see what somebody else is doing. And the more and more time you do, before you know it, two, three hours, you get home from school. Some of the latest you get home is about five, maybe six o'clock if you uh, involved in different things at school, right? So you get home, what you do? Huh? Some of you go to sleep. You get home four or five o'clock, you go to sleep for a minute. What about homework? Huh? You do it when you get home? Okay, so you do your homework, then what? Some of you fellas, how many of you got 2K20? How much time you put on that? Right? Because it's only 24 hours in a day and eight of them was spent at school. You come home, three hours is spent tricking off. I was, you spent 10 minutes looking in the refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? Y'all don't spend 10 minutes looking at what you already know is in there? <laughs> Say y'all don't do that. I throw this microphone at you. You lying, you lying. You open up the refrigerator and you do this move. Right. It's the same freaking milk. <laughs> Ain't nothing else been added to the doggone refrigerator. The same thing that was in there yesterday is the same thing that's in there today and you stand, close the refrigerator. Okay. We got cameras in our house so when we see our kids in the refrigerator standing, we'll take, get close my doggone refrigerator, <laughs> sin. <laughs> then they look up at the camera like, dang, creep. Anyway. <laughs> but your time three hours you could trick that off that that go away as soon as you get home not even trying to do nothing and then you put what 45 minutes to an hour maybe in school work because most of you say what I did it at I did it at school I did it on the way home on the bus because I ain't really want to deal with it like that you know what I mean so I could come home I could chill I could watch the show today's Sunday so I'm gonna watch what power, power. everybody trying to watch power. what what y'all finna watch yeah, look at him. I can't wait to see what Ghost's finna do. <laughs> Face. You know what I'm saying? Look at him. He on that phone. Stop making fun of me. Man, you only got half a half a percent left. So? Okay. You about to kill your battery, bro. Okay. You know how you get when your battery go dead. Okay. okay. Oh, man. Red balls give you wings? Well, I, I got a whole eight pack at the house, but uh, you got eight, oh, you got one of those portable chargers. Oh, oh, oh. This dude, a junkie, junkie. <laughs> but the point that I'm trying to make is, you guys put, you guys manage your time in such an awkward way, where school is at the bottom of the totem pole, relationships is at the top of the totem pole, and ultimately you're more concerned with things that move your feelings than you are with things that build up your career. Judge Afani and Attorney Mars didn't get to where they are by mismanaging their time and having it soaked up. Now, they came up in the era where the phones weren't as prevalent. Uh, prevalent. Thank you, attorney. It's an attorney word. Weren't as prevalent as they are now, but still, you guys still have to choose and make decisions. Sister Jack, you got something? Yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know in Life Apps today, the ones that was not in Life Apps, that uh, I asked people to give up their phones for this service. We had two guys to give up their they phones. Wow. So they've been without their phones for two hours. Two hours. So y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. You can gradually. Who, who phone you got, Sister Jackie? How you feel, King? He look miserable. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing without your phone? I know you've been wondering. Is that my phone? Every time he hear a chime, no, that wasn't your phone. That was my phone. <laughs> How you feel? 
It hurt a little bit. <laughs> wow. It hurts I'm physically. Just, yeah. Why? Because I know when I come back, it's going to be like 30 people that's like, where you been at? Now, what if it ain't none? <laughs> hmm? What if it ain't none? Well, then. You ain't missed nothing. Know. Yeah. But still. Okay. I still want it just to look at it. Okay. Just to, just to what? Just to look at it. Man, you need to be up here in this suit. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to look at it, bro. <laughs> Who else phone you got? I got Quincy's. Come on up here. Quincy, how you? Uh-oh, look out. Boy, ain't nobody calling you what? <laughs> ain't nobody calling you what? <laughs> now, I, I'm going to tell you. Quincy His phone be going off, ain't your team on. But no, I got him locked up. <laughs> but, you know, Quincy had left, and I didn't see him. And I'm like, when he came back, I'm like, did you take a phone in the bathroom with you? I want to know if you took a phone with you. He said he didn't. I checked him to make sure. <laughs> really did not How you feel, me. Quincy? It's kind of hard with all my phone, though. Really? Yeah. How so? <laughs> it's just... It's just the social media and stuff. You want to know what's going on? Your brain. So, is it safe to say, no disrespect, is it safe to say that you nosy? No. No? <laughs> I mean, it's safe to say that most people in here is nosy. You want to see what's going on with everybody else. Am I right? Yeah. What, 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 I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong. It's somebody, somebody challenge me. Let's, let's debate. Because I honestly feel like everybody want to know the tea. I want to know what's happening. I want to see, oh, oh, who got into a fight at Westlake? Who got into a fight at Banneker? Who got into a fight at Creekside? I heard such and such got jumped. I heard old girl who always talking junk at the uh, basketball games and at the football games finally got what was coming to her, and I want to see how she did, and it's posted. So I'll spend hours trying to find it because no one had the link to send me, so I'm going to go searching for it. And it'll take 12, 13 hours. In that, you'll find your determination and in that you'll find your drive going towards something that ain't got nothing to do with you. Where they do that at? That's a question. It's silent in here because y'all know I'm telling y'all the truth. I am. It's real out here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Step up to the mic. Let me know. Because a lot of people want to know what's going on in other people's world. There we go. She's standing up for all of the teens in America. Let's go. So that doesn't apply to me because okay. I don't have a phone. So I spend my time doing beneficial things like, like reading, school. Okay. So That's that what's up. To me. Yes. That's what's up. Yes. I love it. <clears throat> She's solid. She's solid. She definitely got social media. Can I give her my phone? All right. I have a phone, but... The only thing I really look at on Instagram because I'm a volleyball player and I love volleyball is volleyball stuff. I'm not interested in who's fighting, who's dating, Kim Kardashian, all that other crap is irrelevant to me. I'm more so thinking about signing up for the SAT. I'm a senior this year. I'm using Instagram for those purposes. Everything else is irrelevant because it's not going to help me get to where I'm trying to go. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. And I love that. But how many of your friends are? Okay. Honestly, all of them. Because I don't surround myself with people that don't have the same ideals as me. Wow. Very wow. mature, young lady. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. One, I want to tell you I'm extremely proud of you. That's one. Because you represent being solid. Someone who has their priorities in order. Someone who's not folding, someone who's not bending or conforming to what the popular thing is. But I'm going to tell you something, baby girl. You're rare. Mm -hmm. You're rare. There's not a lot of people like you. At that age. Not at your age. At any age. Seniors, you know, seniors usually start thinking about senior stuff at the end of their senior year when they have to, when they're being threatened to not walk. Mm -mm. So it's very rare that you can see young people because they've been so distracted throughout 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 11th grade, by the time they get to 12th and now them counselors hit different, them conversations with them counselors hit different. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Coach Mack, uh, this is Coach Mack, one of the head coaches at Creekside High School. Y'all make some noise for Coach Mack. <clears throat> but he's also a, a teacher there. Coach Mack, how many times have you seen seniors come up to you begging uh, or you seen them begging, trying to just trying to walk? They're just trying to walk because they goofed off 9th, 10th, 11th grade. Talk about it. It happens all the time. They'll come in, and you already know the look. They'll come to your door just with a dead face. And you kind of want to say, 
I told you to pay attention to your freshman year, which is the most important, but you can't as an adult, you want to be supportive, but you cannot wait till the last minute, the time that you're addicted to that phone, you could be using to put yourself ahead. Most of us, as they said, we're just addicted to attention. Just attention. You find people that they'll put anything out there and if someone doesn't like it within 10 minutes, they'll take it down. Takashi. And, and then they'll second guess themselves. So that even goes with graduation in college. Some of you guys don't want to go to a school because you've never heard of it. But you get the same degree or it's not division one or it's not a high major. But then you didn't put in high major or division one time. You would be a division one Fortnite player. You would be a Division I Instagrammer, but you're not a Division I student or athlete. So wow. you just have to find a way to redirect your attention. Wow. Appreciate that. Um, you, you just mentioned, y'all go ahead, y'all go clap for that. <clears throat> um, Attorney Mars, you just mentioned Takashi 69 what, what, Why'd you bring him up? Snitch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I love it when they do that. I, you know, I'm going to pull a card real quick. What you call him? Snitch. Oh, yeah, he's a snitch, right? He is snitch. <laughs> All y'all some snitches. Y'all tell me y'all say. What I say? What I say? I ain't scared of you. All y'all some snitches. You finna face 50 years. 50 years in prison. You tell me. All y'all. Unless. Oh, Here's yeah. the thing. You have no options. Listen to me. Listen. You have no options other than get down or lay down. Right? So here's the options that are presented to you. For all of these things that you that Takashi posted where? Where? On the internet, social so, media. Like you said, for a prosecutor. The cell phones was like candy. Easy. Them prosecutors are mopping the floor with Takashi 69. And what they want from him is for him to roll on or turn on, or uh, we used to call it, he turned state, bro. It's called turning state's evidence. He wants them, they want Takashi to be able to give them the bigger players. And if he doesn't, his little light skin colorful head behind gonna be in a maximum security prison for how many years they trying to give that boy 50. 50 years raise your hand in if here if you think you could do 50 years in a maximum security prison raise your hand oh i'm a, hold on let me take my time and look as i said all oh, y'all some snitches because you got to be a fool, you know, and y'all said it. I wasn't going to talk about it, but y'all said it. Snitch, snitch, snitch. Y'all only saying that because that's what the meme is right now. The, the Think about it. It's a trending topic. You, you, you don't know what's going on with this man. This man has a daughter. He has a mother. He has a family. And everything that you saw on social media, he was doing to entertain you. You guys made him rich. You guys are paying his attorney fees, which are astronomical numbers right now. Am I wrong? No. How, how much on the low end? Millions. Yeah. Millions of dollars. You understand what I'm saying? That's not including, okay, I'm going to buy you a, a $75,000 watch. I'm going to buy you a, 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 a Patel Fatigue. I'm going to buy you, I'm going to buy you, I'm going to buy you. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to buy this car. Now I'm in here and now I'm, this is real because what I was doing on social media, that's not real. What's the first thing they tell you? That's entertainment. That's entertainment, boss. That wasn't for real. They didn't believe that, did they? But now all of you are calling him a snitch. But what's so funny about that, in my career, I've prosecuted well in excess of 100 murders. Wow. Probably hundreds at this point. And all but one case, they snitched on each other. I only Everybody had one tells. case in 16 years of murders where people actually say, and what they said is, if I tell, they're going to kill my mother. And those were actually some boys from New Orleans because I could not believe, I, it was not my experience that I had ever not had anyone at all flip. And they each took the ride, which was life plus 30. So those, that was the one case where I had some defendants actually not snitch on each other. Every other one is the first person who can get to you. They, the lawyers are beating your door down because they know the client that tells first yeah, is the song. one that Everybody might only sing. do 15 or 20 and the other going to do 50. How many of so, them are friends? 
Oh, they're always all friends. friends. Friends, like always best friends. friends. We grew up gang together. Bangers, Day one. Oh, I, you said gangbangers? And I'm gonna tell you something else. I had a mother tell on her son in an armed robbery, so I, on a murder actually, uh, at a gas station here in South Fulton. They always, tell, when that pressure and when it gets real, pressure bus pipes. <laughs> pressure bus pipes. And so we go everybody school, says that they're not gonna be a snitch until it's me or you. And it's always going to be me. And I always tell people, don't do it in front of me because I'm going to ask them, is this mic on? <laughs> Gary, say to say. Gary say that too. Gary say that too. Gary say, oh, I'm going to tell on you. Uh, yeah. I, I, I got this thing because it's like social media, a lot of the people that you guys glorify and, and idolize, they're, they're, they'll tell you, like, I'm going to tell you somebody. I know, I know Jeezy's children. You know Jeezy, the rapper Jeezy, Snowman? Do you know Jeezy's children speak like this? Hello, how are you? Good to meet you. <laughs> pleasure is all mine. Pleasure is all mine. You say, how am I? Oh, I'm well. How about you? Do you know his, his children talk like that? You wouldn't be able to tell that listening to Jeezy, though, would you? Who wants that for their own kids? He doesn't want his kids to be. It's entertainment. So you guys get captivated and mesmerized by a false reality of life. And you start glorifying this thing that seems right, but leads to destruction. These rappers ain't out here doing uh, what they say on their song. Did you see Takashi on his court stand, the, the, the clips and stuff? No, he can't wait to tell. And the <laughs> folks who he was friends with are shaking in their boots right now because they know he about to roll on us. Why? Because it's like, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. You know, I, I want a bullet, 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 bullet. Facing life in prison. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold what's up. Happening? I was a fake blood. Wait a what's minute. What's going on here? Whoa, whoa. Hold on. What's what's Takashi's real name? Christopher? Daniel Hernandez. Daniel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. This is not what I signed up for. I'm Daniel Hernandez. Okay. Uh, and he did it. He, he did it. In the red. He did it. He, he did was it. the one that red did hat. it. He was the one that did red it. Red shirt. He did it. All y'all in red. But while y'all got y'all headphones on, That's what exposing they do. That yourself easy? via Audible to his songs, and most of you don't listen to Takashi 69 right? Trash. Name a Takashi song. Exactly. Okay. But but a lot of you are listening to NBA Young Boy. A lot of you are listening to Lil Yachty. Uh, who y'all listening to? Step up to the mic. Let me know. Boom, boom. Come on. Come on with it. She ready. <laughs> Pop Lord, uh, Lil Baby. I know Lil Baby. Tough in the street. I listen to gospel artists. I don't listen to rap music. At all. No. Who's your favorite rap artist? If you were to, if you was to listen to one, who would be it? I don't know. I don't know any of them. All right, somebody who listens right, to rap. All right, that's what's up, Trey. Who listens to rap? <laughs> I don't listen to anything. All right, come on, come on. <laughs> She's staying solid. Come on, Trey. I listen to Lecrae. He's a gospel rapper. Okay. That, I, don't I don't really like Lecrae like that. You know? I like West End Shouty. <laughs> Get you. I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> Go ahead, Trey. What you got? I'm gonna be real. I'll be listening to Hood Rich. Hood Rich. <laughs> Hey, Jay, what's up? NLE Chopper. Who? NLE. Why you say it like that? You don't even talk like that. I do. No, no. you don't. You just say NLE Chopper. You don't even talk. Chopper. I know you. I've known you He's since this big. He had you to don't put talk a swag like on that. It. He had to you, do sir, it. don't talk like NLE Chopper. NLE Chopper. That's what I said. Trail, do he talk like that? No. You Why don't. you tell me I don't want to talk? You just, you just switched up. It, it's a, I, but I'm glad That's you did that. Persona right now. I ain't trying to throw you under the bus. You got the platform. But you got that platform right now. Nah. Yeah, everybody, all eyes are on you. You have uh -huh. everyone's undivided attention. They want to see what you're going to say. Are you going to be solid and be yeah. AJ? Listen. Oh, yeah, Listen. Basically. Are you going to be solid and be AJ? Because yeah. your whole vernacular just changed. Your accent changed. Everything changed when you said that. That, and I'm not saying that to make fun of you. I'm saying that to enlighten even the rest of these people in here, the rest of these young people in here. Because when the spotlight hits you, who will you, who will you, who will you show? Will you be solid? Because what you expose yourself to is how you're going to react. What you put on the inside of you is what's going to come out. Pat Raise your hand in here if you are a born again believer. Okay. So when the opportunity comes and the light is on you and the mic is in your hand, will what come out of you reflect who you say you are? Pass. Think about what you're saying. 
Pastor Anthony, Go can ahead. I real quick? Because that was his subconscious, right? Wow. His subconscious just spoke to us. And that's what you're speaking to, and that's what we're trying to tell y'all. Your subconscious is more powerful than your conscious. You you thinking, you breathing. You're doing a whole bunch of things right now. Your brain is operating, and you're not telling it. Right. Your brain is driving the car. Like you said, who's driving the car? Mm -hmm. Your brain. You don't know the details of how you ended up at home. Oh, I made a left, and then I was going like this. No, you're thinking about all types of stuff while you drive. That's hardwired in your brain. So you've been listening to NLE Chopper so much that when you got your chance to get up here and tell everybody, That's good. subconsciously, it came out of you. Because God is really your subconscious. That's why you got to feed your spirit with what God, uh, Pastor Anthony is trying to tell you. So that when these moments come, when you get your platform, God is going to come out. He ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, embarrass you or nothing like I know that. that. And I'm telling you that because I listen to the same stuff y'all listen to. And you have to actively, actively deprogram your brain from that. It's hard. It's not easy. But it's required, man, because y'all generation, y'all going to take us to places we haven't even imagined, man. Y'all got tools that we never had. These things right here, like what that young lady was saying about taking your platform, the tool that you have, the social media tool that you have, and you're using it for good. It's like a screwdriver. A screwdriver could put this whole stage together, or somebody could come in here and try to stab everybody with it. It's how you choose to use the tools that's at your disposal. Exactly. Plain and simple. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, AJ. Love you, boy. You know I love you. You know I rock with you love a you long too, bro. way. What's up, homie? I listen to NBA Youngboy. You listen to NBA Youngboy? Yeah. Okay. I like NBA Youngboy. I like him too. But I can't listen to him every day, all day. You know, my, my kids will tell you, I, my, my, my playlist can go from NBA Youngboy to the Commodores in a matter of yeah, minutes. <laughs> Like real deal. Saturday. Yeah, like I, I get with you, and y'all be like, "What? They be like, what? what is what? wrong <laughs> with you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, yeah, my mom was different." Anyways, <laughs> next. What's up, King? Well, before um, I used to listen to rap all the time, but now I, I'm all about gospel now. But I used to listen to um, Stunner for Vegas. Who? Stunner for Vegas. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. You what what made you make the shift? Cause it's like. That's not what I'm, that's like, God has a different calling on my life and I'm just ready to pursue that, you know? Yo. So, so you solid. Yeah. You so do you know that there's a lot of believers out there that will call you fake because you don't listen to regular music? People going to talk, but you just got to know them and stay faithful with God. Preach. Hey, so you know... A lot of girls gonna be in your DM as a result of that, uh, that, that statement right there. I'm gonna let you know that right now. Who is that? What's your name? What's your Instagram name? Face. <laughs> Any more questions? You good? I mean, it's dead now. So it's I'm dead. Just, I'm just here listening now. Oh, man. It seemed like. So you're replacing what you was watching on your phone with what we saying now? Is it working? Uh, barely. You're, 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 barely. <laughs> your lips look like they're getting some hydration as I speak. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anybody else got any questions? Anything like that? We're getting ready to wrap this panel up. Is this has this been informative to you? Do you like the information that you've been getting? Has this been? Inf if not, don't say nothing. Yeah. If it has, make some noise. Yeah. Now listen. The balance to it is, I know some of you like they'll pass the ant trip and he trying to get all our phones took up and all it. Nah, nah. Uh, uh, because in the world we live in today, you pretty much are sitting duck without your phone. It's like, how can we get in contact with you? How many of you have ever, your parents taken your phone and then they need to get in touch with you? And you're like, oh yeah, sorry, you have my phone. How many of you have ever been in this situation? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, well if you was to give me my phone back, I'm gonna tell you something. I've tried something in my own household and like, you know, even like Shane. Shane, can I use you as an example? Like, Shane got a flip phone, and, hey, and he ain't been ashamed about it. Look at him, look, look. He done made it cool, he done made it, because what I'm trying to get them to understand is the phone don't make you, 
You make the phone. The clothes don't make you. You make the clothes. What's up? All right, now, Coach, that's his coach right there. What you got to say, Coach? I hate to embarrass Shane, <laughs> but I'm sitting in my classroom. I hear some boys talking. They're like, man, Shane still be pulling with that little flip phone. Hey. So he, he getting girls' number with the flip you phone. You be pulling them with the flip phone, huh? <laughs> All right, that's what I need to hear. All right, we're going to talk about this uh, infinite campus <laughs> when we get home. Because now I see what you're doing. You understand? You got some other folks looking at you, too. You got about four different folks looking at you like this. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> you be pulling, huh? Active with the flip phone, Active huh? Active with the flip phone. You be flipping it. <laughs> Face. <laughs> Anybody? Show My bad, son. Move. Yeah. <laughs> with your little flip phone. <laughs> digitized phone this stuff anybody got any questions how about any comments what would you say for, for the ones who feel raise your hand if you feel like you solid I love the honesty because it's like half and half so for those of you that feel like you you solid or for those for those of you that feel like you in between what questions that do you have that would help you to remain solid you say what you say and because I, I already know the answer but Go ahead and step up to the mic because there's healing in this. And if we get any questions from any of our fellowship locations, uh, give them to Brian or Brian know how to get them to me and different things like that. Anybody? Come on, step up to the mic. I miss you, boy. I ain't seen you in a minute, neither. I seen you at Walmart. I said, boy, I ain't seen you. Where you been? I'll be there Sunday. Here he is. Hey, man, his word. What's up? I feel like I don't want to have my phone now when I'm in service. That's good. Why? Because it distracts you? Yeah, it will distract me because people be testing me online, calling me too much. And you be trying to pay attention. You be trying yeah. to get that word, huh? Uh-huh. Man, I appreciate you, man. Y'all right. make some noise for him. <laughs> so, uh, Jess, if you got the graphic, can you put it up for me as far as the anatomy of life, y'all? This is how this all starts. Your phone isn't the issue, it's what you're exposing yourself to on that phone, which is the issue. Words, images, and sound determine your thoughts. Your thoughts determine how you feel. It determines whether you're angry. It determines whether you're sad. It determines uh, whether you're holding uh, unforgiveness or whether you're willing to let it go. It's that part, that's your emotions. Words, images, and sounds determine your thoughts. What you think about determines how you feel. Your emotions, your emotions determine your decisions. The decisions is what the prosecutors and the judges and the lawyers get to experience every day because people make decisions as a result of what they've been exposing themselves to. Judge Finney just sat up here and told you that she's tried hundreds of murder cases and I'm here to tell you that all of those murders were as a result of what those people exposed themselves to and what they thought about and they thought about it so long that it got into their emotions and then their emotions led them to a decision and then their decisions led them to an action and then that action led them to habits how many times have you tried people who have been tried for the same thing over and over and over again and then you get judges like Fonnie Willis who say, I'm not gonna send you to prison because I see that you have a support system around you. I'm gonna send you to Next Level Boys Academy because I, I wanna give you one last chance, just like a judge gave me one last chance. Now, of course, I took that chance and I ran with it. But it's like words, images, sounds determine your thoughts, your thoughts determine your emotions, your emotions determine your decision, your decision determine your actions, your actions determine your habits. Your habits determine your character. Your character is who you are when nobody's watching. Your character is who you are when nobody's watching. And then that leads you to the destination of I'm solid, I'm in between, or no, nah, I'm not solid at all. I believe in Jesus Christ. I do, Pastor Ant, I really do. But sometimes I feel like I believe in the idea of him because I don't really know him like that. I don't know scriptures, I don't read my Bible, I don't, and I'm here to tell you, babies, that's the only way you're gonna get to know him. That's the only way you're going to get to know Jesus. It's through his word. I can't know Constance if I don't talk to her and if I don't hear what comes out of her heart. When you read the word, you hear literally what comes out of God's heart. You understand what I'm saying to you? You got you to spend your time knowing him. And when you know him, now you can show him by way of relationship, by way of your finances, by way of your future. Jeremiah 29 and 11 is a, t is, a, is a scripture that needs to be for all teenagers. Uh, Jess, can you put that up in the Amplified version, please? 
Jeremiah 29 and 11 because it's God's heart for you and if you know him then you know what he wants for you if you know him then you know that he says for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you says the Lord thoughts and plans for welfare and for peace not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome he has plans to prosper you he has plans for your welfare not for all of this neck not for depression not for suicidal thoughts not for all of these hurts not for uh, holding on to all of these things that happen to you I preached a message last week in um, Lions Den uh, I think it was Genesis 1 uh, what was it uh, Shane Genesis 1 23 or something where it talks about uh, Jessica find that scripture where it talks about how God has given us dominion over this and over that thank you find that scripture it's Genesis 1 I believe 26 or something like that find that for me uh, while we uh, see what Trey has to say So I was just wondering, because you know, it was in the back of my mind, but can you still remain solid if you, know, you believe in Jesus Christ? You say that you're a Christian. You, know, you say that you live by that word. But you know, on the other hand, you still be putting in your ear all this you know, violent music, you know, talking about killing, robbing, and all that. And then you go to school, and then you act like, or yeah, I'm hard and stuff, you know, you put on a whole front, like how, you know, Pastor Creflo say, you know, you put on different masks in different situations, but can you still remain solid, you know, in the word of God and still be able to say that you're solid if you still putting that type of stuff into your ear? No, short answer, no. And let me tell you why. Uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about how out of the heart flows the issues of life. Well, in order for things to get into your heart, they have to come in some way. And it's usually through your eye gate or your ear gate. So whatever you're making yourself susceptible to, if I'm listening to shoot them up, bang, bang, shoot them up, bang, bang, shoot them up, bang, bang, with my time, and I'm not putting in, I don't know, the last thing I'm gonna be thinking about when, when somebody, when, it, when, you, when, when shoot them up, bang, bang, finally manifests itself, the last thing you're gonna be thinking about is no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Am I right? You're not, you're not, when you're about to go fight somebody, the last person you're gonna put on is Fred Hammond. Dietrich Haddon. Mary Mary. Mm -mm. No, back in my day, you about to put on triple six and you about hey, to go get them. club up. Cause you about to tear a club up. You understand what I'm saying? So, no. Because whatever you put in is what's going to come out. That's why I say, as a believer, our job is to know God and show him. And when I say know him, I'm not talking about know of him. Okay? I'm not talking about just loving the idea of having a savior. Everyone loves, you might as well have Superman be your doggone savior if you just love the idea. I'm talking about, no, I know God. I know the plans that he has for me. I know that he loves me. I know what he has to say for me. And you know what? When my friends are dealing with things, I'm not questioning what I should say. Because I know God, I can show God to my friend in their time of need, in their time of getting ready to commit suicide, in their time of holding art and, and hatred towards their father, in their time of getting ready to uh, uh, start damaging themselves by cutting themselves, trying to relate to some pain that they feel like they, they deserve because of shame and because of guilt and because of all of these things, not only feeling like, uh, 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 not, not only feeling guilty for something that they've done, but feeling like they are the bad thing. It's like the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is feeling bad for what you've done shame is feeling like you are the bad thing that was done when you know God and you show him you can now show God to that person but you can't even do that how many of you have been in a situation where you've seen your friends and you know in your mind what you want to say but you can't articulate the words how many of you have ever been in that situation raise your hand I wish Pastor Anthony was here I wish my mama was here I wish somebody else was here where you were in that position because you don't really know him you know the idea of him and I'm talking about intimacy, Jack. I'm talking about getting to a point where, no, no, not only do I know the written word, but God speaks to me. I know his voice. And when all these other temptations rise up, I don't follow those. The, the Bible says my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. How are you going to be solid and your foundation is on toilet paper? 
but I think it's really important what the young lady said about what she watches is volleyball Come on. and who she wants to be around. There are just, and I don't care if it's the pastor or the judge or a lawyer or someone who's achieved whatever you think is great in your mind. We all have times where we don't feel good about ourselves mm -hmm. or times where we feel doubtful. And that's when it's so important that the people you put around you um, are uplifting you and doing the right thing and encouraging you um, because we need this fellowship, you meet people doing the right thing. The reality is no matter what you, we say up here today, the girl with her breast out, that's the one that gets the million likes. The girl that gets the scholarship to college, maybe she gets 200 likes. People think that's great. You just have to make sure your circle and what you care about keeps lifting you up because you're gonna stumble and you're gonna fall and you're going to fail. So you need messages of, it doesn't matter if you fail, it matters if you get back up. There's nobody on this stage that's proud of every moment of their life, nobody. There's no pastor, there's no one who every moment was a good moment, every moment was a successful moment, every victory you had. Everybody has failures, so you just need to make sure you have people around you and you're listening things that encourage you and that you can be humble enough that when you stumble, you can ask for that help. And it's okay to not know what to say to your friend all the time. Sometimes you just need to say, you know, I'm here for you and I know we have a God that's here for you. And let me get you to the pastor who can maybe be a little bit more articulate than me. But I just want you to know that I'm here for you and I know God helps us, but I don't know what scripture to go to. I love it. You know, we're, we're getting ready to close this thing out. But I want you guys, did, did we answer your question, Trey? Uh, Trey? Okay. Listen, man, I love each and every one of you. I may not know each and every one of your names or your stories, but I'm in love with this generation and I believe in you. But when I see the enemy moving on the level that he's moving, trying to distract you, I know what's on the inside of you. There's greatness on the inside of you. There's giftings on the inside of you. And the only authority and the only power that the enemy has is that which you choose to give him. And he's always trying to finesse you out of your gift. He's always trying to finesse you out of your identity because he wants to be you. Does that make sense? So I need you guys to get to a place where you begin to own these things and you begin to own who you are. Philemon 1 and 6 says that your faith becomes effectual when you acknowledge the good that's on the inside of you. Acknowledge Christ is in you. You're not walking this world alone. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords is with you. And when enemies see you, they're not even really trying to buck on you like that. They're looking for people that the Bible says the enemy goes around like a lion seeking who he can destroy. He's looking for people who don't, who love just the idea of God and don't really know God. Because the ones that don't really know him, he can finesse. He can talk you up out of your identity. He can talk you up out of your future. He can talk you about of the relationships with you and your parents and your loved ones and make you isolate yourself and become hardened hearted and, and, and mean and that's not God's plan for you. That's not, that's not God's best for you. You guys are heirs to the throne of grace. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. And it's time that you start reminding yourself of that and walking like it, talking like it. You understand what I'm saying? Christ-like does not mean mice-like. Does that make sense? Make some noise for our panelists today. Um, God is a type of God where it's like, he's not beating you upside of your head for the bad mistakes that you make, you are. God's only stance with you is he loves you. People don't go to hell for sin, they go to hell for rejecting Jesus. God's grace handled sin. However, there are natural consequences for the decisions that you make. If you go into the store and you steal from something from out that store, you know what? God still loves you, but that judge is going to lock your behind up. And that is not punishment from God. It's a natural consequence for decisions that you make. God's love is, he gives you things when you don't even deserve it. He gives you things that you don't even know you want, but you need. There's a Tracy McFadder, where are you? Tracy McFadder, are you in here? Where? Come here. Where's, uh, yeah. Where's Damika? 
Come here, Tracy. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Did you ask for these? Did you ask for these? You ain't even know you was gonna get these. Right? Let me see what you got on your feet right now. Take them off. You want these shoes? You wanna keep them? You do wanna keep these? Not really? See, God's love, I had no idea where you were. Or who you were. Put these on. Turn them up. Turn him up. And it matches outfit. Hey. Hey. Drip. Was this scripted? That's God's love for you. And the enemy is trying to distract you from that love. You hear me? There's a way that seems right, but leads to destruction. I know some of you in here, sneaker heads, will be like, oh, that's messed up, Uncle Ann. <laughs> <laughs> I look down at Jay, because I already, I feel her eyes on me. For real, you can't wear 10 and a half. Put these on, man. Pastor Anthony. Yeah. I had a pair of them. These? Coaling Airs. Come on. Because my stepfather didn't know that wasn't real Nike. Right. And that affected me. I was in yeah. eighth grade. Yeah. My parents not from here. Yeah. My parents from you know, a country outside of here. So they didn't understand what J's mean to other people. Right. I had a pair of XJ 900s. Pro Wings. Pro Wings. See, y'all don't know about Payless. They don't know about Payless. Who know about XJ 900s? I'm with you. Pro Wings. I'm with you. I knew what Jay's was. My mom knew what Jay's was, but she couldn't afford it. So, hey, you know, we did what we had to do. I'm from Godby Road. Hey, you know, all I'm going to do is kick rocks in them anyway. Well, what you think about those shoes on your feet, man? They real, what? Say it again. Thank you. What'd you say? It's a blessing. Hey. He said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Say it again. Don't be ashamed. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Because yeah. hey. I know some people say might it. not have shoes, but God has given us so many blessings today. Because you were grateful yeah. for the shoes that you had, weren't you? Yes, sir. Because some people don't have shoes. So. Wow. At least. So you didn't care did. that those weren't the popular shoe? I didn't care. As long as I get shoes that can get me somewhere and that I can walk. Now, here's how God works. I didn't know this. I told, I told Demika, I said, hey, find me somebody who wears a 10 and a half, but just ask them. Well, you know, I do that all the time. I said, find somebody who wears a 10 and a half, and, and that's it. That was her only assignment. God led her to him. Are you getting this? Are you, are, you, are you really getting this? God loves you, man. And you live in a world with a, a, a vicious enemy who really wants to keep you from this type of love, man. God is real. And he ain't waiting for you to believe it or not. He's going to be real with or without you. The question is, will you be able to benefit from your royalty? <laughs> your kings, your queens. You mean something. You are somebody. I love you. Do you love yourselves enough to develop your relationship with Jesus Christ? Raise your hand if that's you in here. Okay. If you're in here and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to come on up to this altar. Let's go ahead and fix that. If you're in here and you say, Pastor Ant, I want to make a commitment to develop in my relationship with Christ. If that's you, don't wait three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Be bold with your approach and come up to this altar now. If you're in here and you want to say, you know what, I want to commit myself to developing my relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you and you're in here, come up here now. Stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. Even at our fellowship locations, Even at our fellowship locations. You guys make some noise for our guests one more time as they exit the stage. 
even at our fellowship locations, if you're out there and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then come up to the altar at your location. If you want to recommit your life to knowing God so that you can show God in your everyday area, in everyday areas of your life, and just make the decision. Come on up here. Don't wait. At this time, I want you to turn to your left and I want you to turn to your right and I want you to check on your neighbor. If someone needs prayer, pray with them. If someone needs help coming up here, come up here with them. Go ahead, go get them.